Hi there, my name is Antonio Ferrigrino and today I will talk to you about how to develop custom scikit-learn transformers and estimators. By the end of this video, you will know a couple of good use cases for custom transformers and estimators, and some useful tips to ensure your code works with the other tooling scikit-learn offers. You probably know that scikit-learn offers a wide range of machine learning models, but not so many know that it goes beyond that by providing tooling around other machine learning modeling tasks. For example, we can perform hyperparameter optimization using grid search, or create composite estimators using the pipeline classes. Most of these tools come off the box once you install scikit-learn from PyPy, but there are many other third-party packages that work nicely with the tooling that scikit-learn offers. We can thank this interoperability on the consistent API scikit-learn offers. For example, all estimators have to implement the famous fit and predict methods. But not only other developers benefit from it. Sometimes we need to implement some functionality that doesn't exist in scikit-learn, or it hasn't been developed by the community. In these cases, we can create our own transformers or estimators simply by adhering to the scikit-learn API. Even though scikit-learn has a very comprehensive documentation, here are some quick facts to keep in mind when developing a custom estimator or a transformer. Every parameter the constructor receives must have a default value. All the constructor parameters must be added as class attributes without any modifications. Every attribute that is calculated from the data must have a name with a trailing underscore. Of course, there are other rules, but you can use utility functions provided with InsightKillerm to take care of them. There is also a function called checkEstimator that performs a series of checks just to verify that your estimator code is correct. And of course, there is a template that you can start from in their documentation. Transformer use case, verify model's input. Scikit-learn estimators were originally designed to operate on NumPy arrays, which is perfect from a computing standpoint, but for people, might be far easier to deal with pandas data frames. Estimators lack understanding of column names and their positions within a data frame. And as you might know, given the nature of a machine learning model, even if the input values for a model are shuffled, we will get an output. But this output will be meaningless and given predictions on invalid data might be dangerous in some scenarios. That's why you might think of adding some validation to in your data pipeline. For example, within a scikit-learn pipeline, you can achieve this by implementing a custom transformer that checks that we are getting the right input columns. Please have a look at the following code. As you can see, the class input guard inherit from transformer mixing and base estimator. Our constructor receives a single argument and no logic is executed there. Remember, the three rules I mentioned earlier. Arguments must have a default value and their values must be assigned as attributes without modification. Then we have to implement the fit method. We need this to pass the function check estimator. Our estimator is designed to work on structures that contain a columns attribute. So we check for that and save the expected columns. Remember I told you that any value we get from data must be saved in an attribute with a trailing underscore? That's what we do here. And even though our estimator is designed to work with data frames in mind, we must also support NumPy arrays. Then we move on to the transform method. First, we need to comply with the function check estimator. Then, we check if the estimator was fitted on a data frame, and if so, we call our custom logic. We will see that in a minute. Otherwise, we just validate the input shape and raise an error if it doesn't match what we have seen before. Now, let's move on to our custom logic. First of all, note that our function begins with an underscore to distinguish it from the original transform method provided by the scikit-learn API. Also, note that by this point, we should check for a columns attribute in the argument x. 
If it doesn't contain one, we should raise an error. Then we check if the list of columns for the transformed data frame matches with the ones our estimator was fitted on. If we set this transformer as strict and the columns doesn't match, we raise an error. If the transformer is not marked as strict, we calculate what's missing and what columns are extra and then we just inform our user using a warning. Don't worry about copying the code from this video. It is available in this blog post. As I mentioned earlier, there are some utility functions that make it easy for us to pass some of the check estimator tests without having to implement the logic ourselves. For example, the functions check XY, check array, and check is fitted that we used earlier, all of those functions come from scikit-learn itself. To verify our custom transformer, we can now use a function I have already mentioned way too much, check estimator. Passing the class we just wrote, if there are no exceptions raised, we can be sure that our implementation works nicely with some other scikit-learn compatible modules and that it is robust against some of the most common mistakes users tend to make. But don't worry if your estimator doesn't pass all the tests. If your estimator has a very specific usage or if it's heavily customized to your use case, passing these checks might not always be possible. I will show you an example of this soon. This is how you could use your input guard estimator within a pipeline by performing a hyperparameter tuning with a grid search. It plays nicely with every single component inside kit. Of course, you should never trust a piece of code that you have never seen fail. You can see the estimator fail if we drop a column on a fresh data frame. Our estimator can also just send a warning See how it behaves when we set the strict attribute to false and we taint a data frame with an extra column. All we get is a warning. Remember, we set the attribute strict to false and that's why we just get a warning instead of an error. Before continuing this tutorial, I would like to remind you to follow Plumber across our social networks. I would like to invite you to keep an eye on our blog where you will find more insightful content just like this one. And just one last thing, we have a Slack group where we can answer any questions you might have. Now, let's go back to the tutorial. Estimator use case, logging models predictions. Let's look at another use case. Imagine we want to log all the predictions made by a model. This is very important to monitor a model once it reaches production. For the sake of brevity, we will be using the basic Python logging module, but you can easily extend it to save results in a more permanent storage for further analysis. For example, you could use a database. Before moving on, we must be aware that a scikit-learn pipeline requires all intermediate steps to be transformers, and only the last step can be an estimator that implements the predict method. This means we can split the logging in two steps. We will have to wrap an existing estimator to add the logging functionality to it. In the end, the code we develop will still look just like another standard estimator. Aside from the three rules I mentioned earlier, there is a fourth one to consider when creating an estimator. And this one is that estimators must implement a couple of extra methods. The first one is get params. This one must return a dictionary of the parameters the estimator received in the constructor. The second method that an estimator should implement is the method setParams. And as the name suggests, this method sets the parameters for an estimator. It receives a dictionary with the parameters to be set. Now let's have a look at the code. The class is appropriately named logging estimator, inheriting from base estimator. The constructor takes on the original estimator class, the one we will need to fit. Remember, we are just creating a wrapper. The constructor also receives a variable number of named arguments. We can assign the class attributes from the arguments to the class. 
And these lines will be useful when implementing the logging functionality. Maybe you can start seeing that we are breaking some rules already. But don't worry, we will explain why soon enough. Then we have the methods I just mentioned, get params and set params. We need custom implementation thanks to the keyword arguments or class receives. Then the fit method is basically a wrapper in charge of instantiating the actual model, passing in the keyword arguments we received in the constructor. Once the model has been instantiated, it is fitted. The predict method is, again, just a wrapper. This wrapper calls the predict method of the inner estimator and then logs the prediction if logging is enabled. With this, we are ready to start checking our estimator with the function check estimator. We are using generate only as an argument so that the checks are performed one by one and this will allow us to see all the failures in just one run. This is the output of checking our estimator. Let's dive a little bit deeper into why these errors happen. The first error tells us that the estimator constructor arguments belong to a certain type. Our estimator passes a class as an argument, and that's why it breaks. But this shouldn't be an issue when interfacing with other components within our code, so we can safely ignore it. The second error is also about the constructor arguments. According to the spec, we shouldn't set attributes other than the arguments themselves, but we need them for logging to work. It shouldn't affect our use case either, so we can ignore it. The third error checks that if a 2D NumPy array is passed to fit, a warning is issued, since it has to be converted to a one-dimensional array. Our custom estimator wraps any estimator, which could have a multi-output, so we cannot use the utility function to fix this. Again, we can ignore it. The fact is that check estimator runs a very strict test suite. But if our estimator doesn't pass all the tests, it doesn't mean it won't work. But you will have to be more careful on how your estimator will be used. After all, some custom implementations do not need to be shared with the wider community. They can just live within your code and serve your own purposes. How about we see the pipeline in action, including what we developed previously, the input guard. Notice we changed the underlying model in logging estimator simply to demonstrate that it works with any class that we pass. After executing the pipeline, we get a measure of the performance and the fitted pipeline ready to predict values. We can then turn on logging. You can just imagine we're putting this model in production. When we turn on logging, you can see that when we predict values, these are automatically logged. I just show you how to develop custom transformers and estimators fully compatible with the scikit-learn API. I told you about the check estimator function. I told you about the check estimator function that can help you in the process. But remember, this function is just a guide. It is not necessary to meet all these requirements as long as you reasonably ensure that it works for your use case. Following the simple scikit-learn API specification gives you access to a wide variety of machine learning tools, lifting some weight from your shoulders, since you just need to focus on your own code and your own logic, while leveraging the community for things like pipelines, grid search, cross-validations, and many, many more common tasks. There are some implementation details omitted from this implementation, from this tutorial, but the most important bits are here. Please refer to this repository for the full code. I hope this tutorial has provided you with some valuable knowledge. Remember that there is way more to learn in our blog. Feel free to reach us in our social channels. We love to hear from you. And don't forget to join our Slack community, where like-minded individuals get together to talk about machine learning, from research to production. See you in the next one.